Brainwashing by Humongous The preponderance of humanity on Earth is living an illusion. This erroneous perception of reality has been created via brainwashing. Take, for example, the following Abraham Lincoln quote, extracted from the Lincoln-Douglas debates of 1858. Quote, I will say then that I am not, nor ever have been, in favor of bringing about in any way the social and political equality of the white and black races. That I am not, nor ever have been, in favor of making voters or jurors of Negroes, nor of qualifying them to hold office, nor to intermarry with white people. And I will say in addition to this that there is a physical difference between the white and black races, which I believe will forever forbid the two races living together on terms of social and political equality. And inasmuch as they cannot so live, while they do remain together, there must be the position of superior and inferior. And I, as much as any other man, am in favor of having the superior position assigned to the white race. Unquote. Abraham Lincoln. If this citation was carved beneath Lincoln's head on Mount Rushmore, which is obvious propaganda, few black folks would be trekking to South Dakota. Instead, most of us send our kids to indoctrination institutions, euphemistically termed schools, to be speciously informed the 16th president of the U.S. wanted equality for all. Another example of the illusion that's been created around us would be the Bible, a doctrine roughly 2.2 billion people profess a belief in. This, even though, as Jesus Christ purportedly stated, quote, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Unquote. Jesus Christ, the Bible. A citation as tough to swallow as a gallon of Drano, when you consider it was supposedly spoken by a benevolent being. And how about the fact not a single historian living during the time Christ purportedly rambled the earth wrote so much as a word about the guy? We're talking the main character of the New Testament, a dude who allegedly walked on water, turned water into wine, rose from the dead, etc. A badass motherfucker performing miracles, yet no historian of his era pens a single sentence about him? In addition, we have the blatant dilemma inherent to the supposed immaculate conception. Think logically here. If some obviously pregnant chick professed she became so without having sex, would you believe her? Nope. Moreover, if the crazy in question ran around town proclaiming she was still a virgin, some quote-unquote child protection agency would probably seize her kid, once birthed, as the woman would be deemed an unfit mother. Still, at least 2.2 billion people on earth buy the fantasy of Mary's immaculate deception, uh, conception. To quote Thomas Paine, who was categorized a founding father of the U.S., quote, Were any girl that is now with child to say, and even to swear it, that she has gotten with child by a ghost, and that an angel told her so, would she be believed? Certainly she would not. Unquote. Thomas Paine, The Age of Reason. A third example of the illusion in which we exist would be the blind belief in and obedience to authority, i.e. government. Citizens are forbidden to steal from others and incarcerated for doing so, yet politicians can plunder perpetually. When a member of the populace purloins, it's called theft and deemed quote-unquote illegal. When a politician does it, it's quote-unquote legal and referred to as taxation. Quote, if a congressman breaks into his neighbor's home and takes $1,000, he is seen as a criminal. If, on the other hand, together with his fellow politicians, he imposes a quote-unquote tax, demanding the same $1,000 from the same neighbor, it is seen as legitimate. What would have been armed robbery would then be viewed by almost everyone as legitimate quote-unquote taxation. Not only would the congressman not be viewed as a crook, but any quote-unquote tax cheats who resisted his extortionist demands would be considered the quote-unquote criminals, unquote. Larkin Rose, The Most Dangerous Superstition. 
Can you impose a tax on a politician? Not in this illusion masquerading as reality. Can he impose a tax on you? You fucking know it. Moreover, he can have you imprisoned, your bank account seized, your house stolen, if you don't comply to his obvious extortion. Hence, contrary to the propaganda we're force-fed by government, we are not all equal. If such was the case, we would be able to tax politicians as well and pinch their possessions when they failed to pay up. Humans on Earth are slaves, and most don't even realize it. This is provable in 60 seconds. Slavery is defined as, quote, a condition of hard work and subjection, unquote. The definition of a slave is, quote, one who is subservient to or controlled by another, unquote. If you weren't getting paid, inherently useless strips of cotton and linen known as cash, would you go to that place you refer to as a job, 40 plus hours per week, and perform all those arduous tasks you regularly do? For almost everyone on the planet, the answer is no. More appropriately, fuck no. We are nothing more than dogs performing for our treats. Trained seals, if you will, doing tricks for our rewards. The difference is the tidbits dogs and seals seek have nutritional value. Try eating a handful of $100 bills if you're starving to death in the middle of nowhere in the hopes you'll survive. Again, as long as politicians have quote-unquote rights, you don't, and can quote-unquote legally fleece money and possessions from you, you'll be nothing more than a slave, and those in office will be your masters. Hence, the act of voting is solely choosing which owner you wish to be subjugated by. In the words of Frederick Douglass, quote, I have found that, to make a contented slave, it is necessary to make a thoughtless one. It is necessary to darken his moral and mental vision, and, as far as possible, to annihilate the power of reason. He must be able to detect no inconsistencies in slavery. He must be made to feel that slavery is right, and he can be brought to that only when he ceases to be a man." Unquote. To reiterate, the majority of humans on Earth exist in an illusion. How else can you explain allowing yourself to be nuked on more than 1,000 occasions by your own government for your own benefit? How can you justify apotheosizing George Washington, who owned hundreds of slaves on two of your denominations of currency, throughout countless textbooks, and atop a mountain in South Dakota? How is it not a single steel frame skyscraper before nor since September 11, 2001, collapsed due to fire, yet three such edifices did so on a single day? In one location? Yes, humanity on this planet is delusional. That said, our misconceptions come from a blind belief in the pablum propaganda we've been spoon-fed all our existences.